What's going on boys, it's Flaws, and in this video we're going to be talking about how to effectively practice in Counter-Strike, not just jump into a deathmatch server and start one-tapping people, which people think is practice nowadays for some reason. It's not. If you do that and you jump into a match right after and you're struggling and you're like, what happened, I was just one-tapping everyone on the server, it's because that's not how you actually play Counter-Strike, right? If I just jump into a server, I'm just running around and I see people and I'm like one-tapping, I'm like, oh, like, this is easy, like, it's going to be an easy day today. And then you hop into a match and you're having trouble, you can't really get those, like, kills that you were getting because it's not realistic to how you play. You're not even playing from real positions, right? You're getting picked off by ops, you're playing like stupid, you're just running around. That's not even how you play Counter-Strike, so keeping that in mind, you have to kind of practice all different parts of your game. You have to practice util, you have to practice how I'm playing, how I'm jiggling, how I'm effectively taking fights, if I need to spam, tap, burst, spray, if I'm crouching for this fight, right? Keep all of those in mind while you're practicing and warming up. Obviously don't overwhelm yourself with like stressing out exactly what each movement you're doing in your warm-up is, but like kind of treat it as if it is a match, right? Play in different areas that are common. Like if I'm DMing on overpass, which I don't know if I would, but if I was, I would play from like angles like here, right? Like am I peeking onto the site? Okay, am I peeking off the site? Like just keep in mind like where your angles that you're being exposed to are while you're playing the deathmatch. And you can kind of utilize this in your matches, right? Like, if I'm getting overwhelmed at this point and I'm played a DM on the spot a hundred times, I can listen for audio cues. I can kind of like know exactly where I need to pre-aim if I'm turning different angles, right? So keep that in mind when you're practicing. That's going to help you way more than if you're just running around the map trying to look for headshots in the first bullet. Although that will help your aim, sure. Once you get to the higher levels of Counter-Strike, it's not really about aim as much as it is because everyone's pretty even on having effective aim. It's more about like how you're playing positions, if you're using your utility correctly, if you're working with your team correctly. And I think the best way to do that if you're struggling on like a certain spot on a map, let's say you're playing the B site on overpass, a lot of people have trouble when a full execute comes in, right? So how do you deal with that? You might not even know, right? So you can just go on YouTube, you type in B overpass POV, right? You can watch how pros will like defend against a full hit throw a smoke like this right they might throw a flash in there and they're just trying to delay i would have never known about this until i watched i think it was zipnix who i saw use this smoke and i was like oh that's like that's exactly what i was looking for just to slow them down and you'll see like you use that in a match right you'll see kind of how the enemies react to it how it's like actually really effective if it's not effective maybe it's like only for a certain pro match that they know a team does something specific and yeah that's gonna happen like okay then i'll throw my smoke here and then I have a teammate who like flashes me through or I'll wait for like them to creep up into bathrooms, right? That's also a really effective way to play around uh, bathrooms as well. But the reason you might be doing this in a pro match versus like a pug is a little bit different. Like you might have people in a pug just push right through this. And yeah, it's a free kill or it should be a free kill. It's not always the case in, in your matches. Like sometimes you will get unlucky with the timing. They're not going to do like the most statistically best play on the T side, but... If you can just give yourself these advantages and kind of figure out different solutions to problems in your rounds and the sites that you're playing, that's like a really good way to go about practicing. I'd much rather jump into a YouTube video and watch someone play a position than try to play the same position over 10 games, right? I'm going to see different nades they use. I'm going to see how they work with their team. If their teammates aren't with them, how are they playing the site solo? Are they just jiggling peeking? Are they playing different angles? Are they playing safely? Are they playing aggressively? Like, how do, how do they think about the round? And you can very, very easily see this if you're watching different point of views of professional players. I'm by no means a professional player, but I've watched so many demos at this point that I can basically play every single spot and understand how I'm going to react to every situation better than most of the players, right? So if you're playing, like, let's say you're playing short, right? I'll see pros that are getting a little bit more aggressive. I'll, I'll see pros that are set up here, and I'm like, why are they doing that? Are they trying to secure this area? Are they pushing so that they can play more passive on the A site? Like, what is the point of actually securing this area? Do they use a smoke that's like this at the start of the round to just stop people from pushing in? I think it's something like this. One more out. There we go. Is it something like this at the start of the round where they throw that and then they're pushing into this area and taking it, right? Do I want to do that in my games? Like, I would have never even thought about that until I saw someone do that in a match and I was like, wait, that's, that's really interesting. Although you can watch majors and stuff like that, you're going to miss out on watching someone play the exact same position the entire half, right? Because, yeah, like, they might not actually get a, a really, like, cool play where they get three kills and they secure the round. 
they might be throwing a flash like this over every like once and a half and then they take this entire position they push all the way through they go okay guys it's gonna be a b hit this round that one call and getting that person to rotate off at a and kind of stack b that could win them the round but you never like if you're watching a pro match the commentators aren't going to talk about that there's not going to be this like oh like did you see that one play he just did a long a where like they know that there's no one at B, like that's not really going to be commentated on. It's more about those action plays. But if you watch a POV, like you can learn so much. You can learn what angles they play, why they're playing those angles. I've seen someone play here. Why are they playing this angle? So they can spam a couple of people down. If someone's swinging out far enough, though, they don't have to worry about actually taking a fight with a couple different people. Throw a flash like this, just delay. Keep delaying. If they have a smoke, throw it down like this. Just kind of delay, right? It's making it really awkward for the T's to come out. And I would have never known that unless I watched a couple POVs. You can do this on every single map, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter when, doesn't matter why. Just If you're playing a site and you don't really know how to play it, just look it up. Like That's the most effective way to utilize your time, instead of just playing 20 matches where it's like you're kind of gambling. Oh, is this a better play than I did last match? I don't know, I only get one chance to really try it out. It's not worth it, just look up how people are playing the metagame. And how like, they've... I mean, the people in the pro scene have spent thousands and thousands of hours just trying to understand exactly how to play. A specific point on the map why not just take what they've already like found is the most effective method and see if it works in your gameplay right that, that's just kind of how i would go about practicing like when you think of practicing don't think of it as just okay hop in a server run around just work on my aim yeah like that's great if you like are struggling with your movement with your aim with a certain weapon also if you are going to jump in a dm like try different weapons out don't just use like the same ones every single every single time like even throw a pistol in there, right? Like, sometimes you gotta eco. See how you can effectively use your movement and, like, try to get some kills on people with M4s, AKs, with a pistol, and just... Yeah, your your stats are gonna be awful in the DM. It doesn't matter. It's literally a DM. That's the whole point of it. You can also just hop in a DM if you... Or, not a DM. You can hop in a practice server and just kind of throw some nades, right? Okay, yeah, like, I feel like I'm kind of trapped in this spot if I do start to see people that are coming in. Like, what's a good way that I can kind of counter that, right? Do I throw a flash here? Do I start to like back off? Do I actually want to take this fight, right? Okay, you get that first kill. Then you can back off here. Is it worth it to smoke this out? Is that something I want to do? Just think about this in like your game, right? Same thing on the T side. How do I actually hit the site? Do I know a smoke? Do I know the default smokes that I should know? Do I know to smoke the run up here? Do I know how to smoke bank? If you don't know that, that's another problem. Like you do need to kind of understand these if you want to practice effectively and get to like the highest level of counter strike. You're not going to get to the highest level if you don't even know how to like throw nades effectively, right? That's a huge part of Counter-Strike, and your team's going to basically need you to do that in every single game in the highest level. So keep that in mind. You always want to work on different aspects of your game. Yeah, aim's the biggest one that people talk about, but it's not really the biggest one when you talk about how you want to evolve as a player and actually get to the highest level. I hope this video helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions, want me to talk a little bit deeper on any of these points, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.